Hello, my lovelies, and you join me in the rear seat of a Ford Mondeo estate in the correct colour. And we are on the first part of today's acquisition adventure. And we are heading through Chesterfield Town Centre on our way to the railway station. Right. Here we are then, Chesterfield Station. That was my taxi, a very nice chap. And I've got about 15 or 20 minutes before my uh, train's going, uh, before my train is due. So, um, job number one, have a bag, then grab my tickets and make my way over to platform two, which I believe it's known as the down platform. It always seems a bit freaky this, the idea that you're actually going underneath the railway. I mean, you're kind of worried that it might fall on you a bit. Right, here we go. It's a big bugger, isn't it? <clears throat> Mahusu great side of a thing. Well, it's two great side of things joined together. going to Edinburgh. Gosh, that's a long way away, isn't it? Oh, properly raining now. I forgot my bloody crisps, didn't I? How annoying. Oh, helicopter. Yeah, I forgot my damn crisps. That chap there is beautifully turned out. Here we go. Those wipers are a bit bloody spindly. Look at that. Oh, sure. Right, I'm A15, so which one's A? D, so right, I'm up the front. YouTube channel's not any good, but he's a nice guy. Sorry, Mr. Boaty. To make YouTube videos with... Oh. You had me at YouTube videos. Let's go, Boaty. Same pancreas. And a much-needed cigarette. Right, let's see if I can find my way around this underground malarkey. Just committed a terrible faux pas. Apparently one is supposed to stand on the right of the escalators. 
Now, Victoria Line. A nice lady has just called me and told me to take the Victoria Line. Right, here we go. Okay, so I am at Oxford Circus and I need the Waterloo Line heading south bound. There's something extraordinary about it. adult amongst this lot. Bloody hell. <clears throat> well, I've just spent a very pleasant hour or so with the good Mr. Lloyd and um, I'm now at this very pleasant wooded Sainsbury's car park where I'm currently having a cigarette and I will shortly be putting some fuel in Sir Richard Morris. Meet Sir Richard Morris. My new car. You might recognise it. Mmm, headlamp watches. Time to shove some go-go in. Now, Joseph has been running this on E10. We are not going to do that. We are going to run it on good old E5. Oh, yes. Okay, here we go. Oh, that reflection looked good then. Remember this roundabout in Wetleg. 
gosh, now, I well remember this stretch of road in Wetling and how I was being crushed about all over the place. It's not that dissimilar in this car, actually. Um, not quite to the same degree, but um, the car is a little louder and harsher than you might expect. Now, that's partly because you're sitting on 16-inch alloys and fairly low-profile tyres. But also, this did not have the normal uh, suspension setup of the 45 at the time. The additional weight of the KV6 engine meant that they used a stiffened suspension that they actually went on to use across the range in the facelift models. Welcome to the longest overtaking manoeuvre in known history. This overtake has currently been going on for about 37 minutes and it shows no sign of coming to an end anytime soon. Oh, hang on, the truck on the left is braking. Has he finally had enough? Well, hallelujah and praise the Lord. Excellent. We shall just wait for some people to join us. I say we, it's me. I'm here on my own. I didn't give you much warning, did I? Never mind, I'm sure somebody will pop along shortly. <coughs> oh, where did they? Ah, oh, there they are. That's good. Oh, excellent. Uh, Barry, uh, hello, mate. How you doing? Um, Ashley, how's things? Um, ba -ba -bum. We are live from, where the hell am I? Um, Cherwell Valley Services or something. Uh, it's on the M40. It's bad books. Uh, what's happening, he asked. Well, uh, I'm about to, uh, I'm basically uh, on the back nine of, um, of an acquisition adventure. I am in the new addition to the fleet. And so I thought I'd do a live stream and uh, show it to you. Uh, Trisha Alderman, hello, lovely to have you. Uh, oh, you're fine, buddy. Um, that's good. Uh, no need to be sorry for being away. Uh, looks like a 75, uh, says uh, Barry. Uh, no, it's not a 75. Oh, can you, um, ah. I'm going to move you up. There you go. No clues. No clues. Uh, John Maruzzi, hello. Yeah, we'll just hang on for, uh, see if a few more people fancy 
popping along. Uh, I'll tell you what, I might have a cheeky smoke it, actually. <clears throat> uh, I'm great, Ashley. Thank you. I've had um, I've had a long but enjoyable day. Um, <laughs> I didn't mean you to see the bonnet. I didn't mean you to see the bonnet. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, where have I been? Yes, I, I got a taxi to um, Chesterfield Railway Station. Uh, oh, uh, Disco 2, good guess. Very good guess, actually. Um, yeah, uh, sadly, no. Uh, I wouldn't mind it. No, I've, I've still got my heart set on a Disco 3. Um, is it a Rover? Asks Mr. Vintage. Or sounds, as we as we call him. Yeah, I've been to London. I've been on some tubes. Um, I've been on the wrong train. Uh, yeah, it's been quite an adventure. I've eaten all of my packed lunch. And, oh, is that an MGF? Oh, yeah, nice MGF with a hard top. Uh, Neil Gibbons says, how does it drive, Boaty? Always wondered what they drive like, but never had the pleasure of driving one. Uh, it drives extremely well, to be fair to it. Really very well indeed. Could it be anything other than a Rover? Asks Greg. Well, well. You know, are we saying Rover or are we saying MG Rover? Right, I'll just have a wee smokies and uh, a little drink. And um, and then I'll get out and um, and show you around it. I'm, uh, I'm very happy with it. It's got... Um, it's got a jolly good onboard gramophone. I can tell you that much. How are you? Like anyway, how are you all? Um, <clears throat> I wonder how far from home I am. Not absolutely sure. I've not been using. Uh, I haven't got sat nav with me. I'm doing this old school. A drum roll from Chas Brown. The last one with cut. No uh, the car has got a name. I can reveal that the car's name is uh, Sir Richard Morris. There are strong hints towards an MGZS. There were, weren't, weren't there? There were. I just want to look at it. So he's, uh, oh, that's a long name, SDF Classic BMX, Steve Fitzmaurice. Uh, oh, that was a bit noisy. We'll just wait for a few more people. Uh, I'd love there to be about 25 of you before I jump in. Give it, um, yeah, give it, give it a few minutes. I'm just relaxing with my... Uh, my little fact. Uh, it's been, uh, the journey's been absolutely fine so far. Um, I've been sitting at, uh, oh, cruise control, air conditioning, electric sunroof, all very, very nice things and things that I have missed. Um, I haven't got, do you know, I haven't got anything on, left on the fleet with working air conditioning. Uh, Shison has got air conditioning, needs gassing. Stigbert's got aircon, needs gassing. Um, Brian's got aircon, God knows what that needs. Probably everything. Um, could it be a Rolls Royce Silver Shadow? Seems like a car that would suit you. Uh, Oh, yeah, pretending that you don't know what it is. I forgot that you know what it is, Neil. Is it left-hand drive? No, I can confirm that it is right-hand drive. Uh, what have I missed, asked Jaden. Uh, well, I don't know. I mean, you've missed my journey down to the south coast to pick up a, a new car, which I am in at a random services on the M40. And uh, in about five minutes, I'm going to show you what it is. 
Yeah, I forgot that you know what it is, Neil. Um, <laughs> now, a silver shadow, as some of you know, is probably the car that I feel most at home in. I've owned a lot of them. Well, more than several, put it that way. Is it a Bugatti Veyron? Uh, yeah, because I've suddenly become a multi-millionaire, haven't I? Um, no, it is not a Bugatti Veyron. It's drinking fuel like a Bugatti Veyron. Long old drive boaty. Must be good. It's a, it's a nice car, actually. I'm, I'm very pleased to own it. Hold on, I'm just trying to get my bottle of water open. Ah, there we are. I've already had a water failure and given myself an in-car shower. Good evening, everyone, says Adam. Looks a pleasant car park, Boaty. Oh, Rover 827 Sterling is the guest from Steve. It's a perfectly pleasant car park. I'm up in the top end of it, away from everybody. Doesn't look like the nicest services on God's earth. And I'm not sure of the best way home from here. M40, M42, M1 or... No, I need to cut across to the... Uh, I need to cut across to the M1, don't I? I think that's what I did. It's basically the same journey I did back in January when I brought Wet Leg home. Can you give us a clue, Boaty? Um... Uh, a clue. A clue. All right, here's a clue. I'm guessing that you will have seen this car before. There's your clue. It's not attracting doggers. <laughs> oh, 24 people. One more. One more. And uh, as soon as I've finished my cigarette, I'll get out. Uh, is it silver? Go on, I'll admit it. Yes, it is silver. You know me. How is it not going to be silver? Is it, uh, is it a 190E? Um, asks Jaden. Uh, no, it's not. I don't like them. I like this car. I thought I would like it, and I do. It's a tractor retriever, yeah. Oh, we've gone back down to 21. We did have 24. There are some good guesses coming in. There are some very good guesses coming in. Oh, back to 24. Right, I shall put my iPad down. Actually, I'll put the iPad on the roof there. You hope that dog does a dump on video. Lovely. Let me get let me get Sonia out. I'm gonna need Sonia.
Right, okay, let's do this, shall we? I'll put this. <clears throat> right, here we go. You're all getting it. You're all getting it now anyway. Oh. Oh, 25 people. Perfect. Okay. Are you ready? Here we go. It's not going to come as a surprise to some of you. Da, da, da. There you go, my lovelies. This is the new addition to the fleet. Hands up. Who recognises it? Cosmos Alloy Wheels Chrome Miracaps Whoa <clears throat> Headlamp Washers Who doesn't love a headlamp washer? Oh, bugger, that wasn't supposed to happen. <clears throat> Lovely leather interior. Original mats. I don't know why I'm showing you the bloody car. I'm sure you will know it better than I do. That's just fallen off. <clears throat> um, Jatco Automatic, Duo Tone Interior, Cruise Control. Uh, now look at this. <clears throat> steering wheel without the stereo controls. And the reason for that is the car left the factory with the, uh, with the Becker unit, with the super posh, very rare, very expensive um, Becker sat-nav unit. Um, and they were not compatible with the steering wheel controls. So if the, uh, if the car was specced with, uh, with one of those gramophones, um, you didn't have steering wheel controls because they wouldn't work. Now, as I'm sure a lot of you will know, this has got a, an aftermarket, very, very nice... Um, sony unit in actually but the original is in the boot and the plan is to get the original uh back in there if i can find the code for it and maybe some new buttons because they've got uh, all that sticky thing cruise control thank you very much oh and everything works cruise control works aircon works bum warmers work um Electric sunroof. Oh, I mustn't forget Sonia. I've left Sonia on the roof, haven't I? <clears throat> at least she stays in the community, uh, says Barry. He, at least he stays in the community. Sir Richard.
There's a um, box with all sorts of spare parts. Bill's load of history with the car. Now, here's the... Uh, whoop. I'm trying to do this one-handed. Not easy. Here's the original gramophone. Check this out. This is magnificent. How cool is that? <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> yeah. Be rather nice to get that in, although... <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> the originality is nice, but then the, uh, but then, um, <clears throat> the convenience of the, now this head unit, I'll show you why this head unit is going to have to go. Hold on. Get a bit of power. Oh dear. Right. You know the interior lighting of the <clears throat> orange based. And then look at that. It's all blue. Now, my OCD can't cope with that. So, <clears throat> this is either going to be changed to the original <clears throat> or, <clears throat> or, when funds allow, I'll get one of those Alpines that have got the display option that kind of matches the originals on these but I thought this one all blue that could go into Stigma uh, who's got the blue interior theme that would look rather good in Stigma so that's something to, to do um, I won't ask how much it costs as that's impolite to say Barry but Mr. Lloyd and the rubbish mechanic have done a great job keeping him peddled. Uh, they absolutely have. Um, mechanically, the car is... Well, I, I hesitate to use the word, but um, faultless. Um, Joseph has spent uh, an absolute fortune on the car. Um, and it very much shows that um, there's very little to do. Um, very little. Um, now, in theory, the door cards and the roof lining, but they're not actually that bad. They're not that bad at all. Um, other cars on the fleet are much worse. And the only other thing that, in theory, needs doing is the, as usual, the, um, the clock isn't working. The clock is buggered. But uh, hang on, let me put you in, Sonia. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Ah, there you go. Yeah, so the clock in theory needs to, in if, um, if you're bothered about that. But, you know, <clears throat> you've got a clock on there, on the posh stereo anyway, so there's... Uh, There's actually nothing really... Oh. Needs a new aerial base. But really, car needs for nothing. Absolutely needs for nothing. Adam says, not sure if that one could do it or not, but my Sony one can change the colour of the LED. I uh, don't think it can. Um... Had a look to see if that was an option, and I couldn't see that it was. So, um, yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. So is this going to be your Monday night live stream, baby? Um, see what time I get home, see how I feel. Uh, might do a late one. Uh, what time is it now? Nine o'clock? Um, so I suppose... 
might be home for 11, half 11. I might do, might do half an hour when I get home. Yeah, it's a shame it's not an option, Adam, but, um, <clears throat> yeah, that, that Sony one, that would be fantastic in stigma. So, either pop the original back in here. I mean, I would like the original to go in because it's, um, it's a, it's a rare unit. They're, they're really quite valuable and they had the reputation of being pretty much the best in the world. So, uh, <clears throat> if I can get a code for it and assuming it still works, um, then it might be nice to have the original back in there and pop that one in Stigma because uh, it's, it's a very nice Sony unit that. Uh, got to go, have a safe journey back boat today, Ashley. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to get off myself um, in... Uh, yeah, I'm going to get off my, uh, myself in a minute um, and push on for home. I just wanted to do this on the way home for a bit of fun. Um, as I say, might do a live stream tonight anyway when I get when I get back, see what time it is. Uh, so yeah, there we are. Um, the car drives beautifully, really, really nice. Um, and uh, I had a, a very enjoyable hour or so with Joseph, who is um, absolutely the loveliest of chaps. Um, the, the story with the car uh, and the reason why it's being kept on the QT is um, Joseph was very particular about what he wanted for the car. And he actually um, he actually reached out as I was his first choice to take it on, and uh, he asked that we that we keep things generally quiet. That, I mean, a few people have known that, that he's told, but only a very few. Uh, yeah, and he asked to kind of um, keep, it, uh, keep it quiet until it was um, uh, until it was all done and dusted. And um, this is the perfect finisher to the fleet for me. Um, I didn't have a 45, obviously, since they could be oversold. And in my mind, this is the ultimate 45, the, the V6 saloon free facelift um it's not another silver over for fuck's sake uh, yeah sorry mike have a good journey back boaty it's been a long day it has johnny uh, and well done on acquiring the most reviewed card on the interweb yeah my god this card is well known um me and mustard are the only um youtubers who haven't done a, a video on it i think Although, obviously, that's going to change, isn't it? Um, yeah, so it really fills in the gap on the fleet. So now I've got the, so I've got the, like, the ultimate 45 in my ideal spec. Um, it's a nice car to own. It's, as I'm sure you know, it's a very rare car now. Um, the attrition rate on these has just been immense. Um... <coughs> It's a car that very much suits me, um, and it means that I've got every version of um, K series now. Uh, I've got the uh, I've got the one four, the one six, the one eight, the two liter, and the and the two point five. So yeah, it kind of ticks a lot of boxes, and um, I've had a very enjoyable drive in it, and. Um, the passenger seat microphone is doing a great job. What passenger seat microphone? Oh, right. Lost me on that one. Right, my lovely. Uh, what time is it? Well, it's nine o'clock nearly, damn it. So I'm going to leave that at that. Uh, and um, I'll catch up with you. Yeah, I'll do a live when I get home. Even if it's only for a um, for quarter of an hour or something. Um, I'll do it. I will do a live when I get home. Safe travels. Thank you very much, Adam. Uh, I don't know how far from home I am. I'm somewhere on the M40. Uh, I think I need to cut across, join the M1. Uh, thank you, Mike. Uh, and then it's just uh, it's just the slug up the M1 then, isn't it? Uh, I've got some interesting background to, to share with you, actually. So um, if you're... Uh, 
if you're interested in the in the car uh, and uh, or in Joseph and the car, then um, do um, yeah do check out either Santi Live. Do have a look at tonight's live stream, and uh, I'll probably explain a bit of the connection that you guys won't know about. But I didn't have that until I knew about it. Um, but yeah, there's quite a strong connection between um, uh, between uh, Joseph and my part of the, of the world. So it's strangely appropriate that the car is going where it's going, and uh, it's not for the first time. Uh, don't run out of petrol. Take it home. Uh, thank you. It's uh, got it. Likes a drink of juice. I put 30 quid in, and um, I think I need to be chucking a bit more in there. Um, is it going to be your daily driver? No, absolutely not, Barry. Uh, absolutely not. It's just going to be um, it's going to be going to semi-retirement in the in the peak with uh, with all the others. Uh, show us again. I didn't know you were live. Okay, hold on. Yes, it was. Same chassis as that Civic in the background. Oh, right, there you are. It looks quite like a 600 with those wheels uh, and the boot. Yeah, I much prefer. Um, uh, I much prefer the um, the shape of the saloon, especially in pre facelift form. Obviously, HJ was a hatchback and. Um, I think it suits the saloon so much better. Um, definitely needs a hat on the. Uh, definitely needs a hat on the on the back parcel shelf, and it'll got well. I've got a boater that's going to live on there. I think it needs an AA road atlas as well, um, and uh, and an AA badge on the front grille. It's one of those cars. I'll have those wheels if you get rid. No, Cosmos alloys, mate. Um, these are the proper fitment for the car, so they'll be, uh, they will be staying put, I'm afraid, sir. Um, right. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll leave it at that for now. Uh, thank you for tuning in. I'm going to crack on and, uh, and get home. It's getting a bit, getting a bit dark, uh, and, uh, if you're staying up late, I will see you later on. Uh, I don't know what time. I don't know. Hang on. Let's have a quick look. Let's just bring up maps and see how far I am from home. Hold on. Oh, it looks like I'm 90 miles. Oh, 90 miles away. That's not bad. And a um, couple of hours. Right. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I just caught sight of <laughs> Oh, that's not bad at all. Yeah, I just need to head up the um, A43 by the look of it. There we are. A43, Brackley, Toaster. Uh, and then pick up the M1 at Northampton. There we are. So I should be, what time is it now? Uh, okay, so I should be home for 11. So figure on a live stream at about quarter past 11, something like that. Uh, and yeah, there we are. <laughs> oh, Ben, good afternoon. 
and welcome to a shambolic elderly man shuffling woefully homeward. Oi! <laughs> no, all right, fair comment. I can't argue with shambolic and elderly. Order a woeful shuffle. <laughs> In fact, I'd say that's scarily accurate, Ben. All right, darlings, I am going to get off. Um, if you are staying up, I will see you for a glass of wine at about something like quarter past 11, maybe half past 11 at a push, maybe 11 if I make really good time. And we'll, uh, we'll go through till midnight and then I'll be needing sleep and curry. Possibly in that order, possibly in reverse order. Thank you so much for tuning in and uh, uh, I'll, well, I'll see you next time, hopefully in a couple of hours. Right, live stream done time to get home. Now we have a slight problem in that the fuel has, or the fuel gauge has suddenly dived to zero. So, is the gauge just playing silly buggers? Have we got a massive fuel leak and all the fuel has just dumped itself on the floor? Not sure, to be honest. So, I mean, I did have, there was like a quart for tanking, something like that. I'm tempted to shove a, shove a bit in now just to be absolutely certain that we're okay. Where is the fuel? Oh, it's up here then. I dread to think how much the fuel is here. Why has that gate suddenly done that? Jesus Christ. One seventy three. Okay now. They should be wearing a mask and a striped jumper. I'm gonna have to do it because the gauge is on sod all. This is going to be painful. Right, shoved in another eight or nine litres. <clears throat> and the gauge hasn't moved, so. As usual, when uh, a car changes owner, something goes awry. Hopefully that gauge will come back into life at some point. Right, now where the hell am I going? Uh, A43 Northampton, that's what I want, isn't it? Remember this from coming with uh, with wet leg. <clears throat> ah, the fuel gauge has sprung back into life. Jolly good. I'd like a little bit more fuel than that to be showing though, please. Fuel gauge, if you'd be so kind. Got 
gosh, kicks down very easily, very readily. I am very happy with this car. It's very, oh, that's much better fuel gauge. Thank you, thank you very much. Feel much better now. Uh, it's about, oh, it must be about 10 past nine then, quarter past nine, something like that. Uh, and I'm 90 miles and two hours away from home. So, that's not too bad. And, um, I'm feeling great, actually. Not feeling too tired or anything like that. Feeling great, loving the car. Right, I'll bring you back when we hit the M1. We've been joined by the rain. Fortunately, man of impeccable taste that he is, Joseph has fitted um, the car with Bosch original style wiper blades, which as you can see, are most excellent. Okay, this is fairly horrid lad, I'd say. Okay, this really is very unpleasant indeed at the moment. <clears throat> and it's definitely going to hinder our processing. Process? Progress. It's going to hinder our progress. Because, oh, these are not conditions in which to press on. Especially not in a car that you cared about. These are conditions to think safety first and back up. Okay, we are now joining the M1. Right, so now we're on the M1, it's just the long old slug all the way up to junction 29. So um, I'm going to go and listen to some music, thanks to the exceptionally good onboard gramophone, and I'll bring you back later on. Right, my lovelies, we are coming to the M1 M6 split. So um, we're making progress, but there's uh, still a fair old way to go yet. Mind you, we're not on the south coast anymore. I've got the cruise control set to um, an indicated 70, so it's probably going to be somewhere about the 65 mark, I suppose. And as often happens with a car, it takes only that little bit of familiarity for you to really appreciate the car for all of its good bits. And I'm falling very heavily for this car. Now, I know you've heard me say that about the others, but it's always been true. Um, this car is distinct from any of the others on the fleet, it really is. It doesn't drive like a 75 V6 um, or, a, or a ZT. Um, it, well, it's a 45 uh, and it retains the, um, the, the 45's sportier stance, um, more, how can you describe the, the ride? It's, it's less floaty and it's more involved, I suppose. Um, 
you know, it's a car that you feel with your with your bottom. Whereas on a 75, you um, you feel that sense of removal. Not so much with the ZT, of course, because that's got a, a sportier suspension setup. It's seriously dangerous. That was a brown trouser mo uh, moment. There was absolutely zero warning that this motorway was suddenly going to be coned down to one lane. Zero warning. And um, how that wasn't a crash is beyond me. The, the chap in front of me um, slammed on his brakes, uh, presumably because the traffic in front was coming to uh, an un unanticipated halt. And obviously didn't think he was gonna stop in time, so threw it left into where I was. So I've had to slam on the anchors and I've had to throw left and oh dear me. It was all a bit chaotic. Uh, thank goodness we we got out of that one unscathed. What a ridiculous thing. When it was coned down a few miles back, down to two lanes, there was about three miles worth of warning and <clears throat> everybody just in a very organized fashion moved over. But for this, zero warning. Just suddenly, <clears throat> a very abrupt bump, wallop four lanes into one or three lanes I can't remember what it was that was that was a bit of a bloody bum twitcher didn't enjoy that at all and there was me sitting with the cruise control on well let's um Let's be aware, in case there's a repeat of that, a little further up the road. Here we go again, but well, at least got some warning this time. in front of us. M plate, so that's 94, 95, so um, that'll still be an X300, won't it? Won't have moved on to the 308 at that point. I don't think so anyway. Not again, surely to Christ. This is absolutely fucking ridiculous. Absolutely fucking crazy. Oh, for fuck's sake. Miles going for a long one. This really has been a bit silly, hasn't it? I mean, how many sections is that now? God, I'm glad I don't live on motorways in the way that I used to.
Oh, dear me. So let's observe what's happening in this large combed off area. Fuck all. Then there's some more fuck all going on here. Oh, they're hard at doing fuck all here. Oh, and then a lovely long section of absolutely sweet Fanny Adams going on. Splendid. Fuck all going on here. Nice big section of fuck all here. Very, genuinely very impressive the amount of absolutely sweet sod all is being done. Takes a lot of effort to do as little as this. You are absolutely fucking kidding. You have got to be kidding. This is absolutely fucking insane. In in fucking sane. One of the busiest motorways in the country. And they're coning it down every couple of miles for no reason whatsoever that I can discern. in road my ass. Here we go again then, let's see what they're doing. Fuck all. Fuck all. Still fuck all. That's surprising. They're doing fuck all. This section of motorway holds particular memories for me. When I was first courting Boo, Boo lived in Leicester, and it was kind of one of the happiest times of my life, but at times also one of the saddest. Now when I, when I started, I don't know, talking to Boo, whatever, I was working all the hours that God sent at uh, Sainsbury's, delivering groceries, driving one of the vans, you know. I was working highly illegal hours, I was doing 90, 100 hour weeks. Um, and chatting with Boo, and we eventually went on our first date and our second date. And we started courting, and of course, I was up and down this motorway regularly on my day off. And then, of course, I had my accident. And. One of the cars that I had at the time was an automatic Jaguar S-Type, two and a half litre. And it was my left leg that was most badly damaged, so 
after the initial period, there was a long period where I wasn't able to work, but I could drive, and that allowed our relationship to really blossom. Um, I was off work, but, you know, being paid, and I used to go down to Leicester a lot, and bring Boo back up to spend time with me, and, yeah, spent a lot of happy times up and down this mo this motorway, until, of course, the tragedy with Dad, and that was obviously a very terribly traumatic time, but fortunately I, I had Boo, and that, uh, she helped me get through it, bless her. And then there was the excitement of uh, starting a new life together in Matlock Bath in a beautiful cottage that came courtesy of Sainsbury's who decided that rather than have the effort of um, working around my contract and my long-term injuries decided it would be easier to sack me and I'll always be incredibly grateful for that because of course I sued them on three different counts uh, and they fought it right up until the 11th hour and then literally the day before the three-day tribunal they settled um, and yeah that that's what enabled Boo and I to comfortably start our new life in Matlock Bath and that was also an incredibly happy time right up until it wasn't and I left. So here we go, the merge with the, the 42. Not the M42 at this point, it's the A42. And that means that we're really on the homeward stretch now. There's, um, from memory, there are about 30 miles to go from here, but it becomes normally uh, an easier drive. The motorway is lit, we get uh, an extra lane. So, yeah, it should be a little more pleasant from here on in. I'm going to go and listen to some more music and uh, I'll bring you back at the, uh, the other end of this stretch. You won't believe this. Fuck here now. taking it down to one fucking lane and you can guarantee that it'll be for no reason whatso fucking ever well like I'm not doing it I'm not sitting there like a good boy fuck it the length of this toxic here. We 
should fucking protest this. Just move the fucking cones and drive up the road where fuck all is happening. This is ridiculous. There'd better be something going on. To take a major motorway down to one lane from four, it's insanity. God. In traffic offices, tearing up the outside. Followed by everybody else. I don't blame them now. All I've got to do is get home and I haven't got to get up in the morning. What about the poor bastards who are actually working? <clears throat> Trying to do it. Oh, my, that, my fuel gauge has just done that weird thing again. It's gone from like a quarter of a tank down to absolutely nothing. And there's sod all I can do about that at the moment. I can't be out of fuel. I've put put like 50 quid in. Big boy coming up on the right. Dear me. that person behind me was being kind. Right, so let's see what's going on, shall we, in these three lanes that have been coned off. Yeah, my fuel gauge has suddenly decided to show absolutely zero. It's obviously a quirk. Where it just, you know, plummets like that, but... It's disconcerting to look down and see the needle wrapped around the bottom of the gauge. Even if your logical mind tells you that you've got fuel in the tank. any reason for the 
reduced speed and presumably reduced speed triggered speed cameras. Bastards. Here we go, my loves. Finally, we get off this wretched motorway. It has been wretched today. I mean, other than that, the journey has been fabulous. All right, uh, we got all of that rain, which wasn't pleasant, but, um, you know, road and traffic-wise, lovely. And then we hit the M1. All right, let's get some V6 sound, shall we? That's not flat out, by the way. Oh, that's nice. Back into normal drive. Yo, that's um, that's really quite pleasant, actually. Not all that much to hear, but um, yeah. Old Dicky Dido here, he, uh, he does get a shuffle on, for an old boy. Here we go my lovelies, Hornsbridge Island, which strikes fear into the heart of those who don't know its ins and outs. This Romanian chap seems to know where he's going then. As indeed do I. Here we go. Chance to be a hooligan. Sports mode engaged. I'll tell you what. Don't know if it's a tyres or... Oh, here we go. Oh. Oh, I'd say. <laughs> One thing I have noticed, this car tram lines with a vengeance. Right, my lovelies. We are out of town and we just need to climb up the hill and we're home. Don't know what time it is. Hopefully early enough that we can do a live stream. Oh yeah, reversing sensors. I forgot about those. Here we are then. Need to sort the clock on that stadium. Handbrake on. Gosh, it's half eleven. I'll squeeze in a half hour live. 
Okay, um, thank you for watching this bit. And um, huh. Sir Richard Morris, welcome home. Oh God, you're well and truly on the one. Here we go, that's it. That's it, we're done. Let me unwonk you. I've literally just walked the door, all of my, walked through the door. All of my stuff is still in the car. How's that? Oh, overwonked. We'll just have to make do and mend today, darlings. And I'm only going to be here for uh, for a short while. Because, as you can imagine, I'm a bit knackered. Oh. That'll do. That'll do for now. Oh, God, my legs are stiff. Okay. Right, let me grab some stuff in from the car while people wandering. Evening, oh, excuse me. Good evening, Tricia. Thank you very much. Look, a change of refreshment. That was a gift from um, Mr. Joseph Lloyd of Lloyd Vehicle Consulting, and it's uh, it's actually really nice. I'm gonna, I could be converted to this. <clears throat> Get some more of that. Bear with, just need to get the rest of the stuff out. The stuff in the boot can stay there. will do for oh let's clear this over here okay yeah that'll do for now the rest of the stuff can uh, stay in the car until tomorrow and then you're just gonna have to excuse me because I'm dying for a pee. It's <laughs> been a long old drive home. It's been a nightmare of a journey home. Absolute bloody nightmare. Oh, I've been doing some ranting on video, I can tell you that. Back in two minutes. Good evening, cheeseburger.
Bloody hell, I needed that. That was one of my bigger wheeze, my darlings. <clears throat> and I'll tell you what else I need. This. Come to daddy. Oh, looking forward to that. <clears throat> Goodness me, what a day it's been. Hello, darlings. Hello, hello, hello. Chaz Brown, hello. No, bugger off, cheeseburger. You were disappointed it wasn't the quarter. Oh, dear. <clears throat> For those of you who don't know, I have been down to the... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, to the south coast of England. To spend some time with um, <clears throat> uh, a chap who's got one of those YouTube channel things. And while I was down there, I thought I might as well buy his car. Because <clears throat> I went down on the train and I only had a single ticket. So I had no other way of getting back. So, you know... The obvious thing to do was to simply buy one of his cars, wasn't it? You know how these things work. And here is the key to said car. And of course, I have a key ring and a key ring place waiting for it. What I haven't got is a file sorted out. Ah, oh, right, so Trisha said hello, Cheeseburger, hello, Chaz, hello. Uh, Glad you got back at last. Nightmare. Absolute nightmare. You'll see on the video. Absolutely fine until the M1. Uh, and then the M1, literally all the way, <clears throat> every two, three, four miles, they were taking it down from four lanes or three lanes to one lane or two lane. Talk about stop, start. Uh, oh, Joe's here. Good evening, Jason. Congrats on the new stunning V645. So happy for you and glad it went to an MG Rover fan as well as stayed in the community. How was the journey home? Um, nightmare, but nothing to do with the car. The car was absolutely uh, fabulous. Really fabulous, actually. Uh, just checking. Oh, God, that's a weird key, isn't it? Look at this. That's the spare key. Obviously, aftermarket, but I actually quite like it. Might have that one as the main one. And what does that say? West, oh, Westmore. Ah, oh, quite, I do quite like that. What do you think? <clears throat> no beige leather interior either. No, I'm I'm not a fan of the beige leather interior, uh, le beige leather interior to be completely honest with you oh there's loads of paperwork that's good that's good that's good bloody hell oh check this out hold on i need this Uh, first bill I've looked at, program new remote transmitter, right? So just the program, not, um, not supplying it or anything like that. 25 quid plus VAT, 30 quid total. 30 quid, I could have done that for him. <clears throat> so... Don't pay 30 quid, I'll do it for less. <laughs> 30 quid. And it's an absolute piece of pudding to do. Absolute piece of pudding. Oh gosh, look at all that. Plenty of paperwork, there's loads of handbooks. Oh, I'm gonna have fun with that, aren't I? There's my logbook. Right, jolly good. <clears throat> I don't get that. If you use the car with... <laughs> it is mechanically excellent, says Cheeseburger. Don't let Paddington near it. 
Uh, yeah, it is. I mean, he spent um, he spent a fortune on the car, um, and it drives like it's had a fortune spent on it. To be fair, uh, yeah, it is indeed mechanically very excellent. It, the car needs for nothing really. The faults I were expecting were, um, and that we're going to need doing, were interior clock, door cards, roof lining. You know, nothing in other words. And um, the cards and lining are not bad at all. They'll last a while, yeah. Um, and the clock, well, you know, clock ideally needs doing, but if you've got a clock on the stereo, is it the end of the world? Um, happily, the clock is kind of barely working at all, and I can cope with that. It's when it's half working, so it's obviously knackered. But um, in Richard, um, the car's name is Sir Richard Morris, by the way. There is a reason for it, and um, you will see that reason. I won't bore you with it now, but that will actually be on Joseph's uh, video. Um, he he kidnapped me, took me to um, a deserted gateway and started making a video. And <laughs> there was no, uh, oh, would you mind if, uh, would you be okay with? No, he just <laughs> directed me to a gateway and, uh, and a video started. Only a, um, a short one with me in it. So that rather caught me on the hoof. I was totally unprepared for that. Now I know how Matt and Neil and Johnny and everybody else who rocks up to the yard feels when I suddenly turn the camera on and say, hey, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, indeed, it is mechanically. Uh, in, it's excellent in many, many, many respects. Um, virtually all respects. Um, he spent a lot of money on bodywork and underneath as well. So um, all of the rust has been... Uh, has been sorted and um, you know the car's been future but it's a lovely car um, I'll, I'll, you don't need me to show you around it I'm sure I'm sure you've all seen it in um, well James's JM on cars did it and got like 45,000 views furious driving Matt did a vid on it and got 40,000 views um, everybody else apart from me and mustard have done a video on the car um, I mean, Mark's done it, uh, Mark on motoring, um, well, everybody, just everybody, really. Um, so I'm sure you don't need to see around it, but I'll take you around it anyway in a video just for... Uh, oh, the only thing desperately wrong with it is this stereo. It's an amazing stereo, a really good one, very expensive, but wrong colour display. And it doesn't seem to worry Joseph in the least. Dro drove me mad all the way home. I had to pretend I couldn't see it. That's going to need changing. PDQ, tell you. Oh, that's nice. <clears throat> uh, a day of trains, new car and tinkle clutching excitement, says, uh, oh, it's Steve, my friend Steve. Um, yeah, absolutely, mate. And two tubes as well. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of tinkle clutching and a packed lunch and um, and uh, one, two, three, four pierced nipples. I was sitting opposite four pierced nipples all the way down to London. And then vegans came and sat next to me. I had to eat sausages at them. Uh, now it just needs a Boaties World and Project Nigel sticker on it. Well, it doesn't need a Project Nigel sticker on it. Uh, oh, and uh, Cheeseburger says um, the Hubby and Lucy sticker needs to come off. Um, which is the Lucy uh, sticker? But, um, yeah. And Cheeseburger says Hubby went on a delivery caper with a single ticket and bought an MOT failure for the return. Did he? Which one was that? Oh, oh God, yeah, that, um, what was it? Uh, 206? 
Uh, no, 106. Was it a 106? Oh, I can't remember. Uh, Evening, Boaty, says Jaden. Cheeseburger asks, isn't the engine a bit asthmatic? V6 2 litre, supposed to sound nice. No, it's not asthmatic at all. It's um, it's a really nice refined lump. Um, and the Jacko 5-speed auto box is um, particularly good. Now, even in normal drive mode, never mind putting it into sports mode or um, uh, or Tiptronic, uh, it's very keen to kick down. Um, and it will automatically huh, hold the gear to 7,000 RPM. But it all seems a bit pointless. There's um, <clears throat> the way to drive the car, as far as I can see, is to just leave it in normal drive, um, not floor it, and it makes a nice noise and it picks up speed perfectly acceptably. Uh, it's a really nice thing, actually. A really nice thing. Likes a drop of fuel. Make sure you check the cigarette lighter is working, says John, by burning your thumb on it like you did in the Derek video. Uh, it is working. It hasn't actually got a cigarette lighter in it. Um... <clears throat> But I've had the uh, 12 volt adapter thing in and that works. So I know it works. And now I don't know. I'm not sure that it would have had a cigarette lighter in it. Let me just go into my drawer of cigarette lighter things. Being um, a semi facelift might have had one of these. And I've got one spare, just uh, a blanker. I've got cigarette lighters as well, so. <clears throat> but yeah, it does, the socket does work. Everything works. Um, the air con is ice cold, just been done. The bum warmers work, the heated seats. Cruise control works. Electric sunroof, it's fabulous. Everything works. Jolly nice place to be, really. Joe says it's a stunning, well-looked-after example. Joseph loved that car, and I was surprised that he sold it. Wonder what he's getting next. Um, well, I, I suppose I shouldn't say. Obviously, I know. <clears throat> oh, Maclan Motors has done a video on it as well. Everybody has. Original head unit looks good, <clears throat> says Cheeseburger. Um, yeah, the... Uh, should we have a look at that? Let's have a look at that, shall we? Because I might need your help with it. Sorry guys, the internet disappeared. This is the original head unit, and it is a Becker Traffic Pro. Now, Becker was like the ultra premium brand for gramophones. Um, Beckers were fitted to Ferrari, Porsche, like, you know, all of the top, top things. So, um, you know, the idea of having a Becker in your Rover was quite a thing and it changed the car because as i said in the previous live um no steering wheel controls because this head unit they didn't do a steering wheel adapter for it um so if your car was specced with one of these then it doesn't have the steering wheel controls and to me that's even more reason to to try and put this one back in now Joseph has never had this working because he doesn't have the code for it. So I can't be certain that it works. And, you know, it's been kept in a box for the last three years. Uh, you know. If you do a bit of research on these, then they're a really sought-after head unit, even now. Um, they're worth quite a few quid. Dual uh, colour display. 
this, that and the other. So, um, yeah, I think I would love to get this one back in uh, if I if I possibly could. So if anybody knows how to get a code for uh, a Becker onboard gramophone, do shout out. So that's the current plan. Try and get that original unit back in. Um, oh, there is a repair that needs doing the aerial, but it's not just the aerial that's snapped off. The, the fitting is uh, snapped off. So I think it needs a whole new aerial base which I'm hoping can be accessed by dropping the interior light out. But yeah, that's the plan. Get that original unit back in and that beautiful unit that's in it, that's just the wrong colour display for the car, stands out like a, a bloody whore in a church. Um, that can go into Stigba and that will be fantastic in Stigba. Oh, I'm knackered and I'm hungry. Uh, it sounds like a tour buying 500 quid from somewhere. They're not due just yet, but they're going to be due in, uh, in a year's time. Uh, the original head unit looks in great condition. Yeah, it's not bad. That'll clean up. You mentioned the buttons on the gramophone are sticky. Do you know why? Um, uh... I don't know specifically why, but I know it's a very, very common problem. And I know that they have remanufactured different buttons, which can be fitted. I'd love to have this in the car because I've been researching this and it really is ultra, ultra premium. You know, you're genuinely sharing this with Sparadis and whatnot. You can see the stickiness on the, on the buttons. And apparently it's just a thing that they do. So I'm really hoping this is still fully working. It looks like it's all ISO connections. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll try and get hold of the code. <clears throat> One of those audio forums, somebody will, somebody will have it. Just need to spend a bit of time on there. And we'll see if we can get that in there. And then get the other one in Stigbert. So Stigbert gets a treat out of it as well. Be nice to have that in stick, but. <clears throat> uh, did you know the 45 heater display unit is used in a Lamborghini? Uh, yeah, the um, the climate control panel from the facelift 45 is used in uh, Lamborghini. It's used in the um, Pagoni Zonda uh, and various other supercars as well. The ghosts don't like the new arrival. It probably is that. Uh, similar sticky buttons on the MX-5 are usually caused by cleaning agents. Oh, well, there you are. Live and learn. Live and learn. I know it's a common thing on them. So, uh, let's have a look. New transmitter. Uh, oh, what's this? Ba, ba, ba. Thermostat kit. Uh... Aircon regas service. Oh, it's just had a full service, by the way. Um, Joseph had it serviced uh, before. Um, uh, well, he had it done last weekend. So that's all done, ready to go. Four new tyres all round, matching tyres on each corner. Um, not new, they've done about 20,000 miles. Uh, but they've been rotated, so they're okay. Oh, ouch! Bloody hell. Oh, oh, darlings. This is, right, this is an invoice from this year. Uh, and it relates to when the, the, the crank sensor, when that went, bloody hell. You want to see the total on it? Jesus, Christ above, that's terrifying. That is absolutely terrifying. How come it was, oh, oh 
oh god he said it was an expensive job but i didn't realize it was that expensive christ above how much does this car owe him that really is terrifying dmgrs dmgrs Service items. There's a uh, there are there are boxes in the boot with um, uh, with loads of paperwork and invoices uh, and and spare parts. Bless him that he's got spare that he's um, that he's passed on with the car. Uh, in the glove box, uh, there are um, all the handbooks and more history and more whatnot including all of the original literature for for that becker unit i'd be really excited to get that back in the car i really would need to work on that and that shouldn't really cost anything so that'll be like a free upgrade <clears throat> ah cool well i can have a fun few nights sorting all the paperwork out Sorting the keys out. Got, oh no, I've got I've got the key ring for the main keys. Haven't got a key ring for God, that looks like a brand new second unit he's bought as well. God he's thrown money at this guy. Good afternoon, Jason Lloyd Waffling, says Pingu. That ain't no cod, more like halibut. I will have to get the cod myself now. Oh, do you know Pingu? I thought. I haven't mentioned anything, but I did think that card had you written all over it. Uh, and I would be very happy if you took the card father on, because that is a car that's had, um, had a lot of money and a lot of love thrown at it. And it just needs the right person to take. And it's rare. It's incredibly rare. That's... Um, that's a really nice car that needs a, a really good home. So I would love you to take the Codfather on Pingu, if you fancy it. You know where we are, there's always a deal to be done. Yeah, that would be, that would be the Codfather going to his dream home for me. But you're right. It's definitely not. Uh, it's definitely not the Codfather. Now, if the Codfather had been silver, but no. Oh, pinch punch first of the month. Yeah, uh, white rabbits. Um, welcome to August, everybody. Let's hope the bloody weather's better. Um, he truly spent a fortune on that forty-five. God, he must have. I mean, he really must have. I mean that. This one here, that is scary. And that's only from January. Almost my birthday. January this year. Terrifying. I'm a sucker for a CBT that works. It does work. Um, thank you, Barry, and uh, hello to you. Uh, it does work. It's a replacement gearbox. Um, it's a replacement gearbox, Pingu, uh, and it works very. It works very well. Have a look at the paperwork for the car. Um, it's got paperwork going all the way back. It's never had uh, a bad owner, really, that I can see, and it's a car that spent time in Aberdeen. The owner, not the last owner, the one before, was in Aberdeen. So that card has got proper heritage from the best part of South Wales. My father was born in Aberdeen, and obviously I was brought up just down the road. But I used to spend a lot of time in Aberdeen. Um, my Uncle Bill and Auntie Muriel lived in Aberdeen. We used to visit them all the time. And then as a grown-up... Um, I've had the odd kebab from a, a rather good kebab shop in Aberdeen when I was hanging out in the cottage um, on my own. Uh. 
Godfather goes with tartar sauce in the expansion bottle. No, he doesn't. Um, he's just losing a bit. He's just losing a bit of coolant. Is all. He drives absolutely fine. Doesn't overheat or anything. Um, just uh, a very slight loss of coolant. No other signs of uh, head gasket failure whatsoever. So. Still a perfectly usable car, but, you know, obviously needs to be attended to at some point. How many miles showing? Uh, oh, I think it's 86. I think it's 86, something like that. 80 something, anyway. Has Boo got a tow bar? I can't remember. Uh, yeah, Boo has got a... Boo has got a tow bar. Uh, and... My friend Steve now has a um, uh, a thingy, a what's it, what's you call it, a towing dolly thing that you, what do you call it, trailer, car trailer thing that you put a car on. Um, for those of you who have seen my daily diaries, you will have seen that Steve and his lovely, um, I almost said wife then, sorry Steve, she's not yet, is she? Pull your finger out, man. His lovely other half uh, came round on Sunday and they were on their way to pick up a car trailer for, um, for well, predominantly for Luigi, the beautiful little Fiat 500 that I've driven, uh, to take him to further away shows where it wouldn't be practical to drive him. And also to borrow my King Bolan diagnostic thing to try and sort out what's going on with Nicky's Alpha. But yeah, Miss Boo does have a tow bar. I'm very happy for you, Jason, says Joe. You must be over the moon with your purchase. Uh, yeah, uh, I am actually. Um, that is a car that I really, really, really wanted to own. And... Um, it has not been easy to make sure that I do own it. I've moved heaven and earth um, to uh, to get my to get my bum into that car, and um, <laughs> I'm going to be eating beans on toast for the next three years and giving up everything that costs money in order to pay for it. But I really, really wanted that car. It's, um, as I said, it's the perfect finisher for the fleet. Gives me 25, 45, 75 F, TF and a Land Rover. And um, that'll do. That'll do. That's like perfect. And it's the ultimate spec of 45. Uh, and it's the one that suits me the best. And it's got all the things I love. It's automatic. It has aircon and a sunroof. I hate only having one or the other. I like both. It's got cruise control. I love cruise control. It's got headlight washers. I love headlight washers. And I was thinking about this on the drive home when I wasn't swearing on video about the insane fucking roadworks. Uh, it's like... A very late 1980s car, or very early 1990s car, with a 2003 registration on it. I mean, it is, it was out of date. There's no doubt about that. But I like that. I like it. Um, and, um, yeah, it really needs, it needs my, my hat, my bow turn needs to be on the parcel shelf. It needs an AA road atlas, and I genuinely think it needs an AA badge uh, on the grill. I've done, I've only done that once before on a Volvo, where I bought off eBay a period AA badge and bolted it on the grill. Never had a car that I thought needed it, but I reckon Sir Richard needs an AA badge and an atlas and the hat on the parcel shelf. <laughs> And the picnic hamper in the boot. I'm delighted to own that car. And of course, it's, um, it's an incredibly rare car already. It will become even rarer. 
Uh, and it has to be, I would have thought, an appreciating asset. Um, it's not going to... It's not going to go down in price for being another year older. That's for that's for sure. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm very happy. Uh, <clears throat> My nurse girlfriend kung fu mistress was from Aberdeer. You lucky sod, buddy. Her name was Claire, by the way. Right. The caravan needs moving from the yard. Have you got room for it? No. 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 Um, no, I haven't, and um, we can chat about that privately, Pingo. <clears throat> diddly do, diddly do. 86k miles, low for the year, but sounds like Joseph has had an expensive time. Yeah, I mean, he's been slamming the miles on it. Now, he's been throwing money at the car, but he has been throwing the miles at it as well. He's done, um, what, 23, 4,000 miles in three years? That's, uh, oh, and I can now have my insurance rant. Fucking Lancaster Insurance, right? You watch any bloody motoring YouTube video sponsored by Lancaster Insurance, the most amazing insurance company for all of your fleet, blah, blah, blah. Right. I've got a couple of policies with Lancaster. I won't have them much longer. I did have six or seven policies with Lancaster. And whenever they've needed re renewing, I have gone elsewhere. But... Give them a try. Give them a try. So, let me read this text from you. So, I spend an hour on the phone to Lancaster. One of the reasons I hate them, uh, because it takes you an hour to get to speak to somebody. And then you know what it's like to have to read through all of their script and blah, blah, bullshit. And Joseph was saying to me tonight, he said, um, they must really be looking after you. You know, sort of getting to be a high a known channel, a known name, all those policies with them. This is how they're looking after me. So I spent an hour on the phone and I'm trying to ensure Rover 45, 2000 miles a year, didn't ask for an agreed value. How much do you reckon? Have, actually, have a guess. Lancaster Classic Insurance Specialists, right? Insurance policy, I've got loads of other policies with them. They know me. They know I'm an incredibly low risk. Um, plenty, no claims floating about all over the place. They know I've got a fleet. They know the car's not going to get used. And they know it's kept in like the safest area in the world. 2,000 mile a year policy. I've not asked for an agreed value. Go on, guess how much? Guess how much? Thirty-five percent increase. That's a market says cheeseburger. Okay, so guess how much? Five hundred quid says Barry. Seven hundred and fifty quid says Joe. Keep guessing. Rover forty-five, fifty-two-year-old driver. Classic car enthusiast, YouTube channel, umpteen vehicles, obviously not going to get used, obviously only going to be used high days, holidays, £2,000 a year. Keep those guesses coming in. And when somebody gets close, I'll tell you. And I'm going to get this right out there all over social media, unless they suddenly decide to start sponsoring me, in which case I'll... I will tell you that they're an amazing company and you really should deal with them. I'll take the money like anybody else. 1,200 quid, says Joe. 1,500 quid, says Barry. Any advance on 1,500 quid? 
for a Rover 45. 2,000 miles a year, part of a classic car fleet. I'll have to get the actual text to tell you. Put it on a motor trader's policy. I would love to get a trader's policy. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's not that long since I dropped mine, probably about seven years. Had one for a hell of a long time. Um, but to get a trader's... Now, at this point, it would work out cheaper for me to have a trade policy. Uh, but a trade policy with uh, Tradex is coming out at 2,400 quid and it's a 500 pound deposit and I just haven't got 500 pounds to spend on it. When I have, I will get one and it will save me money at this point. But I ain't got a clue, says Joe, as I'd have thought it would be cheap. Yeah, I thought it would be cheap as well. 1750. Well, that's close enough. Let me just... Lancaster. Hi Jason, we can offer you cover for your Rover 45 at, get ready, £1,760.37p. and p pounds and 37 p For fuck's sake, after keeping me on the phone for an hour, going through every single online forum that I run or am a member of in order to get the price down, blah, 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 £1,760.37p. Fuck you now. Unbelievable. So um, I went on to um, confuse.com um went with a company that i've already got one policy with that i moved from lancaster and it cost me 245 quid and that's a non-classic policy lancaster your go-to place for your car insurance needs really really one thousand seven hundred and sixty pounds and thirty seven p my response says buddy would be fuck off my arsehole hurts that's more than my 12 month old bmw with 30k miles a year says she's i know absolutely insane in other words you know if it was um if they were not a broker if they were the underwriter then you'd say fair enough it's, um, they're just saying, we don't want to insure this car. Here's a stupid quote, so at least we've quoted you. But Lancaster are a broker. And it goes to show you that they are a shit broker. As a broker, their job is to find you the right policy with the right underwriter and to take a margin out of so doing. How shit are they? If the best underwriter that they can come up with is 1,700 quid and I get it for 245 quid just going on a comparison website. That tells you all you need to know about them. You know, apart from the other stuff where I've got on record where they admit to selling policies that don't exist with false companies and all of that kind of thing. But we don't need to get into that, do we? That's going to be the title of this live stream. 1,760.37 reasons why I didn't insure my new car with Lancaster. Ugh. If you're falling out with Lancaster, then you won't be asking Sarah Crabtree, Crabtree back for afternoon tea. I've got no idea who Sarah Crabtree is, uh, to be honest. And I've already fallen out with Lancaster. I've already plastered stuff across um, across my socials um, after their operative um, on record, on record, after I got an online quote said, um, you can't count that online quote. That's a company that doesn't actually exist. I got an online quote. 
uh, brokered by Lancaster because they tried going under a comparison website. Details came through, looked at taking the policy, looked at who the company was that was underwriting the policy, rang Lancaster and they said, yeah, that company doesn't exist. And if they do exist, um, we don't deal with them. So ignore that quote. Don't take that quote because, um, you know, it's not going to be a real policy. You're not going to get paid out on if you need it. So when you've got an insurance broker telling you that, or you've got an employee of the insurance broker telling you that on record, then that's kind of all you need to know. But aside from that, I just can't be asked to spend an hour on the phone on hold every time I want to do something with car insurance. When other companies, you can get straight through. Anyway, that's enough of that. Joe says, insurance for me being young is mega money. MJ was uh, 1,003 quid, which was cheap for me being 22. And that policy includes everything and breakdown cover. My maestro says, buddy, cost me 600 quid in 2002. I was 20, but then I blagged it a bit. I need to Google Sarah. Do I? Why? <clears throat> Why, is she my type? Is she a brunette in her late thirties, slender and willowy? Double jointed and open minded. <clears throat> right, darlings, I think, yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that, my loves. Sorry for the couple of interruptions uh, and we will reconvene tomorrow night. I need to drink wine and eat curry and revel in the <laughs> I do love the cat I do love the cat <clears throat> and um, yeah I look forward to doing more stuff I'm I'm shattered I really am absolutely shattered let's all bugger off to bed shall we I'm hungry as well I always get hungry on these trips, even though I take plenty of food. Not plenty of food like Mustard, who, who takes two loaves of bread. And I should just put on record before I disappear, that Joseph is a lovely, lovely guy. Um, absolutely lovely guy. I really enjoyed... Uh, hanging out and spending a bit of time and having a drive with him tonight. Um, we didn't film any of that. Um, he just, as I say, he just um, filmed a bit relating to the car being sold and got me to do a bit. God knows how that will come out. He, um, uh, he totally took me by surprise and uh, he said his camera had a lousy microphone so he was right in my face and I don't do well with that. But hopefully it came out okay. You'll see it on his video. I've got no footage with Joseph at all. Um, didn't want to do that. And uh, he doesn't film anywhere near where he lives very sensibly. Um, so, yeah, we just we just had a good old chat. And he's, a, he's an absolutely lovely guy. Um, so I really enjoyed that. And it's been great dealing with him. And as he will point out in his video, it's, uh, it was a weird sort of sale because he, um, having realised that for various reasons he needed to move the car on, it's not a suitable car for putting that sort of mileage on it. Um, <clears throat> but there are other reasons as well. And he literally chose me um, as the ideal new keeper for the car, again, for various reasons. And um, I had, I've had first option on the car for quite a while, um, way before it became known by anybody else that it might be for sale. Um, and the deal has been done for, again, for quite a while. We just, um, <clears throat> we both wanted to keep it quiet until it was a fait accompli, so 
I will do a video thanking him properly. <laughs> yeah, I know, cheeseburger. I know. Wouldn't be my way of doing things, but hey, each to the room. And he is, God, he's knowledgeable. But I can't wait to talk in a video about the the connection between Joseph and me and by extension the car that we didn't know was there. Um, there is a particular connection with Joseph and this exact part of the world. And the car, the my new car, it's no stranger to this part of the world. Indeed, Joseph knew how long it would take me to get home every single road that I would travel on, and he knows exactly where I live. Um, because there is... Oh, I'd love that. I'd love to do a live with Joseph. Yeah. Um, well, he has an open invitation to come up here now, and uh, I'm tired. I'm waffling. Let's all go to bed. All right, darlings, I'm not going to fart you out tonight. I haven't got the stuff all ready and everything, so I'm just going to say thank you for, um, um, well, shall I just say thank you and good night, and I will see you tomorrow. Um, God knows what tomorrow is going to be like. I'm going to be absolutely slaughtered, but still excited to go and play with the car a bit. Um, so, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow night, 11 o'clock, back to normal. Uh, have a great Tuesday. Take care of yourselves. Much love. And thank you for playing along today and uh, whatnot. Okay. No, no. Bye bye. Good night, my loves. Boats would like to express his heartfelt appreciation to his amazing channel members. Alain Cyrle, Project MGTF, Rosette Chicks, Chef Daniel, The Greenwood, Typhoon Cat, Richard Mahon, Dinosaur Dad, Car Crazy Norwegian, Tricia Alderman, Mickey Jeffries, Jimmy Quinn, Neil Gibbon, Classic Wheels Wall, Joe Cox, John Moruzzi and The Fabulous Psychonaut 7. Your support means the world to him, your all fucking legends and they thanks you from the heart of his bottom. Thanks also to everyone who supported the channel in other ways with super chat, super thanks or just by watching the videos and leaving your noble alone when the advert come on. See you on the next video. Oh, and I'm not wearing any panties.